Hello, I'm Dave Hart. I'm the preacher for the Warren Avenue Church of Christ in Winslow, Arizona, and I am so glad that you've chosen to join me today. Today we're taking a look at a sermon called Faith, Hope, and Love. Number two, we, we had number one last week. Um, if you missed it, I hope you'll go back and take a look at it. And we talked about faith. Today we're going to take, talk about hope. And next week we're going to talk about love. And this lesson, of course, is based on 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So we know the greatest is love, and that will come next week. But we also know that both faith and hope are essential to the Christian. Now, when we talk about hope as a, as a Christian, it can be different from what the world might think of hope, you know. We can say stuff like, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow, or I hope I get ice cream with my dinner tomorrow. And that kind of hope is a, is a hope that, that might happen, or that we hope that might happen. But the hope that the Bible talks about is an assured hope. It is a hope that is going to happen. It is going to happen. It, it is, it, if we have true biblical hope, we can rest assured that that hope is going to happen. God gives us hope. And, and to have hope in this life is such an important, important thing. To live without hope or to not have hope. And, and I, you know, I've said it before, I know how people who are not Christians survive in this world. What, what hope is there but than the hope of Christ, the hope of heaven? Because there's no hope in this life. Listen, this is, the, this is a fact of this life. Even if you might live a so-called charmed life, you, you don't have financial problems, you don't have health problems, you don't have relationship problems, you, you don't have any of these problems, and of course there's nobody in life like that. But let's say you did, the fact is you're still going to get grow old, and you're still going to die. I don't know how many people in this last year that I know or knew of or were famous people that I grew up with that died. Of course, we had many that died with COVID, and unfortunately, there'll be more. The fact is, there is no hope in this life. And, and even many Christians want to place their hope in this life. We, we have a whole group out there, the prosperity gospel people out there, that, that, that wants us to emphasize the hope of this life, in which, in the end, there is no hope. You can amass all the fame in the world. A generation or two will probably forget about you. Won't know who you are. I, I was just um, talking to one of our younger members in church this week. And she wasn't too awful young. Maybe, you know, close to 30 or 30. And we was talking about, me and an older man in the church was talking about some of the famous people that, that we um, knew as, as movie stars and, and, and on TV shows, people like Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood and, and, and just people like that. She had no idea who they were. No idea. No idea. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the money. All the money in the world. Did, did, did you hear about the guy? He was a rich guy. He was a really rich guy. And he told his wife, he said, Honey, I worked so hard for this money. When I die, promise me you'll, you'll put all my money in my casket before you bury me. And she says, Honey, I'll, I'll do that for you. I promise. I'll, I'll put all your money in the casket when you die. So the man dies. And she writes him a check. She writes him a check. and put, But, but that, that check is going to do him no good as it would have done him no good if she literally put all of his, his money into that casket. We're going to leave it behind and people are going to take all the stuff that you own and, and probably spend it in ways that you would never have thought of spending it and, and, and after you worked so hard for it. So, so listen, there's no ultimate hope in money. People put their hope in relationships. Some people put their, their, their hope in a bottle of booze or a joint. Oh, all they want is to get get some more booze in their system, some more drugs in their system. 
that in itself is going to kill you in time. No, we we put our hope in something that's true, something that's real. And, and, and in life, to have hope, to have real hope is so important. I heard about a story about uh, Pearl Harbor, that one of the ships that was sunk, there was that there was people in, in, down in, 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 the, in the ship and um, uh, they wanted to get to them but they had no way to get to them but they could hear them on Morris Cove banging out is there any hope is there any hope oh hope is so important for us so important for us and us who are Christians we realize the hope is not in this life just as those men in that sad situation of that ship there wasn't no hope for them not in this life not in this life but in the life to come there's ultimate hope there's great hope am i saying that we shouldn't have hope for things in this life no i'm not saying that am i saying that there's this going to be no happiness or no joy in, 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 in hoping for things no not at all not at all i'm not saying that I'm just saying, just remember, that is not a hope that's going to last. You can marry, listen, I, I know of marriages that, that, that um, stayed together 50, 60 years or more, loved each other. Still, sooner or later, one of them died and, then, and that hope of that relationship ended, didn't it? So I'm not saying don't hope for things. It's wonderful if you get 50, 60 years of somebody that you love and care about and you can grow with and grow closer to giver and have children and grow closer to the Lord. Wonderful things. Things to hope for. But, but remember, all the things in this life don't last. Be thankful for the things that God has given us. But remember, our ultimate hope is in Jesus Christ and what comes next. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, this is God speaking to us, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. See, God wants us to have hope. He wants us to have hope. He wants us to have a future. And there again, hoping in things in this life, I have some hopes in this life. There's some things that I hope to accomplish before I die. There's things I work towards, there's things that I want very badly. There are things as, as, as a minister I've been working at towards for years and years and years. And, 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 and you know, one of the goals as I've always had for the church here is to, is to try and get a certain number of Christians in it. And I've worked at this for years and, 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 and sometimes the numbers have gone up and sometimes the numbers have gone down. They've gone up and they've gone down. And, 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 and this whole thing that's happened with COVID has really brought them down. Still, they're, they're, they're way down here, we're working on it. But the numbers are way down. But I still have hope. I still have hope. I have hope that this virus is going to end. I have hope that, that the, the church is going to bounce back, and not only bounce back, but even have more than we've ever had before. I have hope for things in this life. I have financial goals. I like to be financially secure at, at, at some point in my life. And, and, and there's things that I hope for in this life. But my ultimate hope, my ultimate goal is to get to heaven. Is to get to heaven and to take as many with me as I possibly can. The Lord wants the Lord doesn't want evil towards us. He wants to give us a future. He wants to give us a hope. Oh, we may see things as evil. At times we may see things as hard, but sometimes that's the, the, the Lord trying to steer us, trying to get us in the right path, to think rightly, to get in the right direction. But ultimately, the Lord is for us, and we can put our hope in Him, and we can put the hope our hope in the future that he has planned for us. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, isn't that wonderful? What is that wonderful? He fills us with hope. He is the God of hope. Because as I said, there's hope in nothing else. 
you, you can't put your hope in worldly things because they can, can and will be taken away in an instant at some point in time or slowly over time but, but God is the God of hope and we should have joy we should have joy in, in life even if the Lord sees fit to take away everything that we have we can still have the joy because we still have the God of hope and we know the future that he has for us and once again people in the world have no hope they have no real hope oh, they make they make their plans and they have hopes for things in this world that don't last but they really don't have any hope when they go to the grave it's done it's over whether they've accomplished much or little whether they're famous or there's somebody that nobody's ever heard of it doesn't matter they're going to be dead and when they're dead as far as things in this life as far as any kind of hope in this life it's gone it's past i've heard um, uh, famous atheists last words before they died and if you've never heard this go go on youtube and and, um, and, and um, put in something like famous atheist last words and you can read what these famous atheists these famous atheists who are so prideful in this life and so sure there was no God and so so brave so to speak spitting in the in the eye of God read what they said before they died famous atheist after atheist after atheist it is sad it is pitiful and it is scary so that, that that's your assignment this week go on go on YouTube and, and, and put in last words of famous atheists see see what kind of hope they had when it came to the end but but we Christians are not like that we're full of hope we're full of hope even even as the body deteriorates even as the body gets weaker and and, and listen I'm you know I've, I've, if you listen to me um, uh, for any time you you know that you know I'm somebody that, that still works out and tries to keep my strength but no matter how hard I try at my age I don't get stronger I get I get slowly weaker and and it's hard it's hard on my ego it's hard it, 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 it's hard to understand you know I've worked so hard and this is slowly be ta being taken away but there again in the end my hope is not in my strength my hope is not in my body my hope is in Jesus and where he's going to take us which is heaven so God is a God of hope God is a God of, uh, of power to give us the things that we need not not necessarily the things that we want if God gives us things that we want praise him for it it's an added bonus but he gives us the things that he needs that we need but the most wonderful thing he's going to give us is that eternal life of him in heaven that we live in hope of Romans 12 verse 12 says rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continually steadfastly in prayers so we're to rejoice in hope we're to rejoice in the hope that we have that's why there again for a christian whatever it comes along we can still have hope all things can make us sad you know when we when we lose somebody we're going to be sad even if we know we're going to see them again even if we know where they're going it's still a separation that makes us sad but we have that hope of seeing them again don't we isn't that wonderful one day one day we'll fall asleep in this life and we'll open our eyes and all the loved ones, all the, our fellow Christians, Jesus, the angels, the prophet, all of them, we're going to see that and we're going to be there with them and it's going to be forever and ever and ever. So, so we rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation, boy, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Tribulation, trouble, troubles in our lives. Don't like trouble rather not have trouble don't want trouble want to get over trouble as soon as I can but God says to be patient there's a reason there's a purpose there's a purpose listen I don't think for one moment God wastes a Christian suffering I don't think for one moment I think he, that there's always a reason and there's a purpose for it there's a purpose for it we need to be patient 
and we need to be continue steadfastly in prayer. Listen, it can be hard. There's things that I have prayed for for, I don't know, you know, almost my whole life. And I still haven't realized some of those things. But I still keep praying. I, I, we're, to, we're to keep praying. We're to be steadfast in our praying, to keep praying. I had somebody um, text me, I think it was this week. Um, they said, are, are Christians praying about this COVID thing? And I said, are they pretty much anybody that says they have any kind of faith towards Christ is praying about about this this COVID thing. We, we, we need to pray. We need to keep praying. Keep knocking on the door. Romans 8, 24 through 25 says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we e eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So just like last week, if, if you listen to my sermon last week when I talked about faith, we, we, we have faith. And, and things that are unseen. It's not a blind faith. It's not a faith just based on wishes. It's a, it's a faith based in fact. Same thing with hope. We, we, we haven't realized the hope that is to come. And that's why, as I said last week, and this is the reason why love is the greatest of these, is that hope and faith will end. When we die, hope and faith will end because we won't need faith because we'll see of our sight. We won't need hope because all of our hopes will be realized at that point. But but till then, um, hope is something in the future. Hope is something that is going to happen. The Christian hope is in the future. There again, is it is an assured hope. It is assured that we're going to die and go to the Lord or the Lord is going to come back for us. It is assured that we will stand before God in judgment. And it is assured that if we have faith and obedience we will go to that wonderful place called heaven. Just as it is assured that those who stand before God without faith or obedience will go for an eternity in a very different place. A place called hell. A place without hope. A place where there is no more hope that will ever, ever 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 exist don't want to go there don't want you to go there don't want anybody to go there and that's why as as christians are mandated by god to go out there and preach the word of god to bring everybody to him so that nobody will have to we know people will and they'll reject and choose not to but we need to fight for every soul that is out there and tell them about that great future hope that we have um, and it says um, we must have perseverance. You must, we must keep having that hope. We must keep having that hope. I've seen people in life just give up. They give up. They give up on their Christianity. They give up on the Lord. They give up the fight. They get tired. They get re weary. Don't we all? And, and, and it gets hard. It gets hard. Don't think preachers don't fight these battles. You know, some people think preachers are, are, are somewhat beyond these things and, and they're super, super men Christians and stuff, but preachers are just Christians doing the work that, um, that, that they believe God intended for them to do. And they get discouraged. They get discouraged when things happen in their own lives. And they get discouraged when, when things happen with those in the in the church that they're working with people leave the church when they lose faith when they when they walk away from god it hurts it doesn't hurt as much as it hurts god but it hurts we must have perseverance if we want that great and glorious hope that god has promised us so we must persevere and keep on hoping keep on hoping and keep on hoping until hope becomes sight Romans 15 verse 4 says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through the patience and comfort of the scriptures we may find, we may have hope. We might have hope, sorry. 
So we find hope in the scriptures. We have hope in the scriptures. The things that are written beforehand, the Old Testament things, were given to the people in the Old Testament times to give them hope of the coming of the Messiah. Now the scriptures give us the comfort of knowing the coming back of the Messiah. It is where hope is found. And uh, when, um, when I've really struggled in life, when things just seem so bad, and there's been some times in my life I have been so low, you, I mean, you're just as low as you can get. But I, I would turn to the book of Job, and I'd read through the book of Job and listen, it would, it would make me just, my emotions, I'd be so emotional reading through it. And the struggles of Job, and I, and, and I could relate, I mean, my never had all the struggles that Job's had, but it helped me to relate and, 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 and you know, just feel the, the emotions inside. Go through that, that wonderful book of Job and in the end, in the end, no, there was a purpose for the suffering. And you stay strong like Job did. No matter what came, Job stayed strong. Oh, he didn't understand. He, he never claimed that God was doing evil or wrong, but he didn't understand. He didn't know there was this stuff going on behind the things that he could see and feel. But what happened in the end? What happened in the end of the book of Job? He, he, he got things that were even greater than he had before, even more wonderful. So as wonderful as this life might be for you, something even more wonderful is coming. And if life's not so wonderful for you, there is something wonderful coming for you. So, so we can get our hope from reading the Bible. Read the Psalms, read, read the book of Job, read, read the Bible and, and, and understand the hope that we have and it can lift us up and lift us out of the struggles that we might be going through. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has, begot, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So there again, our hope is in Jesus and it is a living hope because Jesus lives. Oh, they tried to kill him just as men do today. You know, men are trying to erase Jesus. They're trying to kill Jesus in all kinds of different ways. They can't do it. You remember that, that, that saying and that song, you can't keep a good man down? You can't keep Jesus down. They can try and they can try and they burn Bibles. I don't know if you saw, what was it, this last summer up in Oregon, they, they got together and burned a whole bunch of Bibles at their, at their, at their riots. And they, they can do what they want to do. They're not going to kill Jesus. And Jesus is in us and you're not going to kill us or you change our address. But you're not going to kill us. You're not going to kill us. We have a living hope and, 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 and He is going to live and we are going to live with Him, and we have that wonderful hope to look forward to, and it's going to be wonderful. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So when hope runs low, when the struggles get so real and they get so difficult, there seems to be no end to them. There seems to be no way out. Remember, they killed Jesus. They murdered Jesus. There seemed to be no way out of that, did they? Did there? In three days, it was a whole different story. Hang on. Hang on. When, when, when it goes, when, when hope runs low, trust in God. Read His book. Believe the promises. He will strengthen us. He will uphold us. And He will take care of us with His mighty, righteous right hand. He is there for us. And we can make it through if we keep our hope in Him. Keep hanging on to Him. Remember, remember when um, um, uh, 
uh, uh, Jacob wrestled the angel, the Lord, and he hung on and he hung on and he wouldn't let go and he wouldn't let go and he wouldn't let go. He says, bless me! I'm not letting you go! That's the kind of hope we need to have. We need to hang on to Jesus. Say, I'm not letting go, Jesus, because you're my hope. I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go. And the Lord honored. The Lord honored his 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 um, faithfulness, his determination to hang on. And he'll honor ours also. Titus 2 verse 13 says, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, as I said before, there's nothing wrong with hoping for things in this life. And as long as we keep that hope in the proper perspective, nothing wrong with praying for things in this life that, that we have hope for. You know, maybe, maybe you need a new house today or you need a new car. Whatever it is, nothing wrong for hoping for those things and praying for they, those things. But remember the assured hope, it's not an assured hope you're going to get a new car or a new house, but the assured hope is that the Lord is coming back for us. The Lord is coming back for us. And as a, on a side note here, sometimes you might run across sometime in your life a Jehovah's Witness, as, as I have, and they will ask you a, a question sometimes. Where in the Bible does it say that Jesus is God? And most people, most Christians, unfortunately, don't know. Well, this is one of the places. This is one of the places. L listen to the verse again, Titus 2.13. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just tell them Titus 2.13. You know, they're, they're, if they're like any of the ones I've come across, they open their little Bibles, even the little ones that the, 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 the perverted translations they have, and it still says this, and they just they're just shocked; they don't even know what to say. So, so remember this passage. Finally, today, Revelation 21, verse four. Revelation 21, verse four. This is the thing that we're hoping for. This is this is the thing that a Christian wants more than anything. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Think about that, all the pain of this life and suffering and, and, and shame. And, and, and I believe here is talking about even the things that, that when we're face to face with God that we know we've done wrong. But, we, but we've repented of God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, death is so hard. I've, I've, I've you know, been through the death of my parents. I've been through death of friends. I've been through death of, of um, I remember I, there was um, a girl, my, my um, youth, when I was a youth minister, just a young girl that had died been through so much death in this life, death of my precious dogs. I'm a person that loves my dogs, and I mourn over the deaths of every dog I've ever lost. There'll be no more death. There'll be no nor sorrow, nor crying. There'll be nothing to be sad about. Nothing to ever be sad about. There shall be no more pain. No more pain in this life. Listen, I've, I've had so many injuries over the years. And my body is, is just full of pain. It hurts to stand. It hurts to sit. If I sit too long, things go numb. On and on and on. I'm, I'm, I'm full of pain. No more pain. For the former things have passed away. All the things, all the struggles, all the shortcomings, all the fears, all the loneliness, all the self-doubt and everything that weighs us down, that troubles us, that that hurts us in this life, will be gone forever and ever and ever. And it's going to be so wonderful and it's going to be so great. And, you know, if you've seen the commercials, they'll say the greatest place on earth is Disneyland. 
never been there, don't know if it's true or not. Kind of don't think it would be for me, but if it is for you, that's great. But any place in this earth, and I've been to some beautiful places, I've been to some wonderful places, I've been to some places I never, never wanted to leave. As beautiful and as wonderful those places are, they pair, pale, pale deeply in comparison to the wonders and the beauty of heaven. And it will never end. It will never end. There's, there's been times in this life. See, things end in this life. There's been times that I've been out. I remember when I would, uh, my dad would used to take me fishing. I loved to fish as a kid. I loved to fish. And he would take me out and we'd be fishing and it would start getting dark. And he didn't like to stay out after dark. And, and, and I always dreaded that time because I just loved being out there. I loved fishing and I, and I, I, would, have, I would have just stayed there forever if I could have. But heaven is going to be more wonderful than that. And I won't have to leave and you won't have to leave. And it's going to be glorious. And in this life, we're, time is so short. You know, I talked to some of my friends that, that, that live far away from me. I have um, my friend Ed and Kathy back in Arkansas, and we're very, way far away. And I don't know if we'll ever get to see each other again in this life. And we get to talk to each other, and we could just talk for hours, but other things get in the way, and we have to go on of our lives and do things. You ever think about heaven? I'd be able to sit down with Ed and Kathy and talk to them for, for weeks. For weeks. And wouldn't even make a dent in time. Oh, how wonderful heaven's going to be. The, the hope of heaven, the things we'll see, the things we'll be able to do, the, the, the differences in our bodies, the people that we'll be able to see who were Christians who got on before us. What a wonderful hope we have in Jesus Christ. Let us never take it for granted. Let us be thankful for it. Let us be thankful to Him. Let us work every day of our lives to make it to that wonderful hope and to bring others along with us. If there's any out there today who's not put on the Lord in baptism, um, I hope that you'll think about it. Because if you want to have the hope that we've been talking about, you must be baptized and baptized the proper way in order for your sins to be, give, be forgiven. So if you haven't been baptized, please, please contact the Church of Christ in your area talk to them. I thank you that you'll, you'll, you'll love these people. I think you'll find them just wonderful and very helpful in your spiritual walk. If you are using this today as your, your um, sermon, maybe you're a shut-in, maybe um, your church hasn't opened yet from COVID or, or you're still leery of going back, um, please remember to do the other things to do that, that you need to do for your Sunday worship to sing pray, take an offering in the Lord's Supper. If you found this video useful, I hope that you'll share it with others, encourage others to watch it. I want to thank you so much for, 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 for watching it with me, and I hope next week we'll be able to uh, look at the third lesson. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful week.